As the pandemic continues, we have seen clinical trials for a COVID vaccine being paused. And what exactly does this mean in our race to develop a vaccine? Here to break the science down for us is Nine Health expert Dr. Pyle Coley. Thank you so much for waking up with us on a Sunday. Wanted to start with, you know, when you see a trial like this pause, is it a cause for concern or is this the system of safety checks at work? You know, thankfully, it's the latter. It's a system of safety checks at work. And in a big clinical trial like Johnson & Johnson with over 60,000 people, it's really not uncommon to have this kind of a pause. At this point, Anusha, we don't even know if the pause is in a participant who received the active vaccine or somebody who received the placebo. So it could have just happened by chance, but it does show that the scientific process is working to your point and the data safety monitoring board is going to look at this and see if this is something that we can then resume the trial on in fact this is exactly what happened with the astrazeneca vaccine just last month where they paused it due to a case of transverse myelitis or inflammation of the spinal cord the safety monitoring board looked at the data and they were able to resume the trial later in europe so we also have to keep in mind when we're having multiple vaccine candidates out there like we have right now four front runners one of them may not come to fruition, but I'm not worried about this. I think it actually tells us that we're doing the right thing scientifically. Benchmarks that have been set by the FDA for a vaccine to receive an emergency use, use authorization. And how does that timeline work? So the FDA recently announced that they've actually want at least two months of follow up safety data in at least 50% of the clinical trial participants. And in my opinion, this is the absolute lowest bar. Normally, we have years and years of safety data in all of the, the trial participants. So we really can't rush this process. But what it's done is it's actually pushed the timeline back because many of these vaccines are two doses. So after the second dose, you then have to watch the participants for at least 60 days, which takes us into late November, early December at the earliest for when we could have the vaccine. Now, the other kind of benchmarks that are not absolutely set in stone, but advised by the FDA are to have diverse trial populations, to have underrepresented minorities like African Americans and Latinos, to have older individuals, and to have children. So Pfizer has actually now started enrolling kids as young as 12 into their clinical trial program. Oh, that's really interesting. Our last question for you is, you know, it's very interesting. The world is literally watching for this vaccine development. And you talked about this. This is usually a really long process and we've got a very different timeline here. So how do you ensure safety in this process? That's a great question. Usually vaccines take 10 to 15 years to develop. The one that's been developed the fastest before this one was the mumps vaccine in the 1960s that was developed in four years. And now we're talking about under a year to develop this vaccine. So part of the safety process is making sure we have those benchmarks in place like we discussed. But there are things that you can do that are scientifically sound to speed up vaccine development. And this is the concept of something called a challenge trial. So normally what happens in a vaccine trial is you give the participant either the vaccine or the placebo, and then you wait for mother nature to naturally infect them with the virus and see if there's a difference between the two arms. If you want to speed up that process, you actually expose the participant to the vaccine, uh, excuse me, to the virus after you've given them the vaccine in order to see if, you know, the vaccine protects them. Now, of course, this raises many ethical questions because some people will have gotten placebo um, and this is not a condition that we have a treatment for yet. And then at the same time, some of the people enrolled in the vaccine trials um, may have a financial incentive to participate. So it could be some socioeconomically disadvantaged members of our community. But that is a way you can speed up the scientific process for vaccine development and that's scientifically sound. Yeah, well, thank you for going through the pros and cons on, on that one. And as always, we appreciate your time and your perspective.